Phew, gracious, we made it back, finally! Welcome, adventurer. This is the city of the Uka, the sky city of the Uka. Uh, since you came all this way, I guess I can give you a tour of the city. Eek! Oh goodness, brave adventurer, you won't believe it! There's a dragon raging outside the city walls! Oh, I'm terribly worried about everyone. I'm going to go to that shop to check for survivors. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. In the last episode, we came up to the city in the sky, and this episode, well, that's, that's where we are. There's a dragon flying about, and Uku's up here, and all sorts of mad shit is going on. So, without further ado, 20 rupees. Um, right, one thing I'm going to point out right from the start with this dungeon, there's a lot of chests, a lot of rupees to be had, and I'm going to try and gather a lot of them, because rupees are extremely handy in the phase of the game we're currently going into. So... Uku came this way, she said she's gonna go to the shop, shop to check for survivors. Oh, it's a bit windy. It is a bit windy, that's why I've got the iron boots ready just in case. Let's head through. So, this is a quite unusual dungeon in that it has a shop. It's a perfectly functioning shop. If we speak to this other Uka here... <laughs> You're Hylian, no? I speak a little Hylian. You understand me? Is there something you you're interested in? Pick it. I'm just gonna quickly buy some arrows just to make sure we've got full because you'll be shooting a lot of shit in this dungeon. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny because that's a phrase. Anyway, let's talk to actual Uku here. Oh, um, sorry for earlier, adventurer. Ooh, but you're planning on walking around the city and taking it in, right? I'm worried about the others and this is an emergency. I can't just stand around waiting. Please, take me too. I won't help you walk to the surface, but I will bring you back to the shop at any time. Weirdly, it says Uku Jr. there, and it gives the description of Uku Jr. despite this clearly being Uku. I think that's a glitch. Anyway, that's Uku just got for the thing. I think that's still technically missable, but... Anyway, let's head back to the landing pad. And, yeah, you have a number of ways here. There's a chest down there that, can, that just contains, like, underwater again, which just contains water bombs of all things, which you absolutely will not need in this dungeon. Um, so that's very strange. Behind us is the cannon that takes us back down to the surface, just as we got in here, but actually, we're gonna go straight ahead. This is a really interesting dungeon. I always kind of forget about it because of how late in the game it is, because it's essentially one of the final few in the game, as you can probably imagine. Oh my goodness. Um, so I always kind of forget about it. It has some fantastic moments, but also some really annoying shit. So I... In a lot of ways, I do rank it amongst my favourites, but I have a very big reason why I don't as well. You'll see what I mean in a couple of episodes' time, I'm sure. Anyway, if we open that up... One thing I will say about it, kind of the puzzle design and stuff is in here is great. There's one room in, partic in particular. Nice little flyby there. Don't know why I didn't give us that at first. I suppose we had the view with the dragon and stuff. Um, yeah, there's one reason, uh, there's one room in particular I really like, and the dungeon design is really good. Um, and the whole aesthetic is quite good. Anyway, there are just random uka walking around, and they function like chickens. You can just pick them up. Oh, those got nipples. That's weird. They're disturbing looking things. And you can glide with them just like you can with coo uka, uh, cuckoos. That's the normal version. Uh, helm assault you can kill here. Right, these blue platforms are of note, because if you apply pressure to them, they shake, and then they start to sink. Get off them, otherwise, otherwise you're gonna die. Weird thing as well here. Took me ages to work this one out. Note the Uku can also just walk on the walls. Looks bloody weird, doesn't it? And that's the inspiration for both the Uka race and this entire dungeon. Future Doctor, if you please, put the image up. Yes, indeed. That is not at all concept art for this game or anything. That image is... The, it's a painting by Gaudi, Antonio Gaudi, the famous surreal artist, uh, and it was, the one who did the, the Melting Watches, his most famous one, I can't remember what it's called though, um, but yes, that's, that, this, the whole dungeon and concept, it was inspired by one of the developers, saw that painting, was like, the fuck, with these man-headed chickens walking on the wall, 
Man, strange place. Anyway, new enemy up ahead. Kind of, well, like kind of a permutation of existing enemy. We've seen Helmosaurs. This is a Helmosaurus. It's larger, and you cannot grapple its face off. But it can be killed quite easily. You just need to basically maneuver yourself behind it, which is quite easy in situations like that. Oh, wow. One jump attack kills it. That was a bit easy. Well, I don't feel good about that. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of ways here, but there's actually not a great deal we can do because some of these other ones, you can't really go out through them. Um... Just take my word for it, they're, they, they're blocked in some way. If we come over here, though, Claw Shot, extremely handy in this style. No dungeon, um, because it can Claw Shot onto a lot of stuff, like grating, like that. I'm also going to be smashing a lot of pots, because pots have money on them in this, and as I said, gathering a lot of money. Almost like we have Magic Armor to fuel now. Anyway, we come out to a little bit here, and, man, this tests everything, doesn't it? We have the Spinner! Haven't used this for a while, let's spin. Okay, I'm sure that'll be important later. Let's grapple back up here, and head back inside. Now, oh, would ya? Uh, okay, the Helmosaur hasn't respawned. I thought it might have done. Now, we can't immediately get across there, but there is handily another window up there that we can grapple to. And this isn't where I thought it was at all. Oh, well, lucky me, I got a fairy. What an odd place to put a fairy, and not give me a single moment to get a bottle out. Actually, that reminds me, at this point, I'm gonna... We've got, yeah, we've got a bottle of Great Fairy's Tears, um, and two of fairies, but one bottle of Lantern Oil, and there's pretty much no more uses for Lantern in the game, so I'm going to pour that oil into it just so we've got a spare empty bottle, should we need it. Going to put the bow back on, because we'll probably need that, Iron Boots, probably need those. Okay, oh yeah, that's what I'm meant to do. We can't go through that window, but we can hop down here, and this way, hey, we're over here, because you can't grapple over here. And now, we can go through here. Slightly odd thing, because this dungeon has the inside and outside sections. It does proper, like, loading screens whenever you go inside or outside. Oh, look at that! There's... Aye, There's now, handily, a bridge here, because we did the thing with the spinner. That bit confused me no end the first time I did it, because I was like, where, 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 where go? Where go? What do? Anyway, this you'll see what I mean about the loading time here. It's a good couple of seconds, and I think usually I'll cut it out, to be honest. Um, right. What did we do in here? Man, I can't remember this dungeon very well at all, can I? Um, grapple over there, yep. And grapple up there, yes, no. Well, apparently I missed it. Hey, we got a chest. Which contains a small key! This'll be handy, I'm sure. Um, yeah, this it's very easy to get lost in this place, so I'm kind of doing everything in a very specific order. There is quite a lot of stuff below us here, but not really anything we can do with it. It's, also, as you can imagine, there's a lot of propensity for falling off and dying in this dungeon. Nearly called it a gym there. Well, it serves a similar function to a gym in a Pokemon game, I suppose, but... Now, oh, we've come across here, yeah, you gotta watch out for the wind. You can just about, if you run straight into the wind, it won't blow you off, so you don't actually need the iron boots, but it's just a bit handy to have. Anyway, if we head back through here... Yeah, remember that dragon from earlier? Turns out he's a he's a real piece of shit. Uh, so we can't cross there anymore, so... Should probably draw attention at this point to the music as well, which is, in case you hadn't somehow noticed, bloody weird. Um, just... It's like, it's got normal music. Oh, what the fu- I didn't do that! I was- Ah. Oh. <sighs> you know, I've been bitching about my nunchucks still not working for over a year. Of course I've not bought a new one. Because it still functions just about, but I mean, it only really does the very cardinal directions. So you have to be holding all the fuck the way right, otherwise it's like, did you mean up? That might just be non chucks generally, it might not even be mine, but I need to stop whining about it and say, oh, I need to replace my non and just not doing it. But yeah, music is kind of fairly normal here, and then occasionally you just hear creepy voices going, you'll see what I mean. I'll, you can hear it there, but I was talking over it. I'll stop next time you can actually hear it. Eh, you can't really hear it that clearly there. Anyway, here we've got uh, another kind of what appears to be an impassable chasm over there. But we can make it a, 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 a passable chasm if we come over here. Oh my goodness. 
They're really generous with pots in this, so they give you a lot of stuff in pots, like, as in in this dungeon specifically, with, like, arrows and rupees and hearts and stuff like that. I want to try and stay near the heart limits, like, the upper heart limit, so I can actually try and get um, the great spin-off once or twice. Because um, I feel like I should use it, because it's, it's the final hidden ability, even if it's not brilliant. But, yeah... I don't know. It's it, it bugs me that it's up. Oh, that it's not something really cool. It's just it's the spin attack, but bigger. Something like the jump strike or the mortal draw that's cool and has never been in a Zelda game before might be cooler. Or even like sword beams. We've still never seen the sword beam. So when you're at full hearts in a lot of 2D Zelda games, you swing your sword and lasers come out the front of it. I don't think that's ever been in a 2D Zelda game, a 3D Zelda game, unless potentially you count certain but the skyward strike and side, skyward sword. But that's not really limited in the same way. This is a fun room. So there's wind blowing, and of course. To not be blown away, you got to use the iron boots. Here's a funny thing as well. If you take the helm off those guys, <laughs> they get blown away too. Oh, I don't feel good about that. But, so, oh, Joe, oh, Joe, oh, dear me. Uh, can I get back up and quickly put the iron boots on him? Nope, going to die. Well, let's try that again. Firstly, put the iron boots on and walk through here. And now we can't do that with the second one because these are platforms that will fall down. And they will fall down extremely quickly when you stand on them with iron boots. But we don't have to walk here at all. Ha ha! I sound like Mickey Mouse there. BLAG! Well, that was embarrassing. Let's make sure we're actually positioned somewhere where we can safely drop off this time. Nearly bollocks it again. And why am I still wearing iron shoes? Let's kill this guy. And so. There is now another, there's another door through there, but we can't get there against this blowing wind thing. There's no grapple point or anything like that, so it'd be fucked. So let's go through here. Now, this is a weird room, and there's not much we can do with it for now. It's massive, but we can't get to the majority of it. We're just going to grab some stuff from these chests. Aha! A yellow rupee. Handy. As I say, I'm just kind of collecting juice for some things we'll need rupees for, plus the magic armor, which is always handy. Anyway, let's get this chest. And we got the dungeon map. And I may need to resync because my TV did that thing again where it flickers. Yeah, something about my new flat is great, but it has power fluctuations. I've already lost both of, one of the HDMI ports on my um, TV, which is mildly annoying. Because um, it was something to protect to it and there was a power surge that wasn't plugged into a surge protector. And now the HDMI port just doesn't work. Which I find to be mildly annoying. Anyway, um, but I've, I've worked a way around it. At least if we grapple back to here. Interesting. I thought that worked. Uh, dee hee. No, nip. Oh, just grapple there in time. That was scary. Yeah, you have to be slightly on the blue things to be able to grapple there, which the game knows. And so it's, yeah, timed grappling. That's scary. Anyway, put the boots on, walk through here. But we're not going to go back through there. We're actually going to come around here slightly because we didn't really investigate this if we firstly kill the Helmosaur. Shank him up. And let's grab some of these. Oh, look at that. See, a lot of money in, in, uh, what are they called in this? What are they called? That's a very good question. Jugs! God. I'm, I'm not the smartest. Anyway. The fuck? Oh, that was it. I was looking around just like, what am I doing here? And then, yes, then I remembered. Man, this dungeon still really throws me. Oh, for God's sake. So, I'm trying to shoot that, um, thing, the crystal, but I can't because you can't shoot arrows through strong winds. You can, however, shoot a claw shot. And that turns that fan off. Now, the long walk back round there. And we can cross over this bit safely and head south. That's a nice little puzzle, that bit. I like it. Really makes you use the room properly. This one, however, is mildly more annoying, if I remember it correctly. Yes, it's this one. So firstly, you'll notice there's jets. Don't try and jump through the jets, it'll end badly for you. There are keys around. The best way of killing keys is when you're up close to grapple them. Let's wait for this to go down. Yeah, these jets start and stop, so... And remember, these blue bits will fall when you stand on them. Oh, here's an enemy that makes a weird and unwelcome return from the bloody forest temple. It's tile worms. Apparently, they're still a thing. At least dead now, so let's hop over here. I don't think he's dead, he's probably going to come back. They have a tendency to do that if you don't actually kill them, if you just knock them off. Let's go over here. Right. Oh, is that another tower one? There's another tower one. Yep, got it. Well, the guy unearthed him. Let's kill this keys as well. Uh, right, now we have to... Okay, didn't need that, I'm sure. Um, now we have to come back here. And we can get this, we only have like 20 rupees or something like that in it. But hey, worth it anyway. 10 rupees, even. Well, every little helps. Oh. That was- I, I went straight the fuck into the wall there, that was weird. 
Uh, can't go that way, so let's not do that. Can't place that there, my lord. Um, there's another tower worm over here. It's kind of cool. I always like it when games kind of do that. Um, I, no, I kind of like it when games do that, when they kind of bring back an enemy you haven't seen for ages, like right in the end or something like that. It's kind of cool. It's, yeah, just reminds you that stuff's not always one-off, which is quite nice. Oh, door is locking. Right. Interesting. So, there's two Lizalfoss here. I struggled with Lizalfoss when I was in the Temple of Time. Since then, I've been learned. There's a couple of easy ways to take care of Lizzle Foss. With the one on these rooms, the ones in this room, you can just take them both out with a bomb arrow before they actually see you, because their guard is down when they've not targeted you, so that was pretty straightforward. And that opens up another thing of that. Ooh, nice thing about Lizzle Foss as well, when you kill them. Chance of them dropping a bloody purple rupee, which is awesome. We're already getting a serious bit of money in our wallets, and it would be nice to have as much as possible. Now that locked door up there opened, we can get up here. And, need to have a little think about what we're doing here, because we can get across there, but we can't really, because it's the same height as us, so we're not going to have enough beans from an uku, uka to fly over there. But, observe. Wow, firstly, you can get like 30 rupees from here as well. Now, Link is looking up. Remember that old trick with Zelda games, follow their eyes. Grapple onto the chandelier thing. Turns out, it's a switch! Which sets that jet going. Grab one of the Yuku. And when the timing is right, hop off. And glide it up. It's like an old Deku Leaf maneuver. You get a great upskirt shot on Link. But yeah, it's like like a Wind Waker Deku Leaf surfing kind of thing. And now we're back in the room we were just in, but we're above it. One of the things I really like about this um, game, game? Uh, this dungeon in particular, is it uses three dimensions really well. Like you end up doing a lot of stuff where you you fly one way and then you kind of come back into the room from a different angle and stuff like that. It definitely uses the full three-dimensional space that it's got, which is awesome. We're not going to quite make it over there, or are we? Yes, we are. Right. Let's... Oh, bollocks. We need to continue all the way along here. There we go. We got it. Because there is, at the end, a chest. Oh, that, that does still work, even with a Nuku. I don't know why, why I think it wouldn't, but yeah. Iron Boots, good way to quickly drop down when you're flying on any form of chicken, be it a regular chicken or a man chicken. Um, let's grab onto this. Oh, it's worth noting as well, because you'll have to do it pretty much at this point. Grappling onto Uka works pretty damn well. Um, as in... Where did the one just go down there go? Oh, that's the helmet saw. Don't care about the helmet saw. Because I need an Uka up here, so let's grab that one. If you grapple them, they'll come straight to you and go directly into your hands, which is handy. Ha! <laughs> oh, I'm funny. Right, wait for this thing to start up again. You don't need a run-up or anything, you can just jump into it and you'll glide straight up, which is awesome. Ah, uh, these things don't have a great turning circle. Oh, uh, uh, there we go. The door's on the other side, as you can see from the map, but you need to come to this side first. So you can actually- way That was fun. Launching the pots into the air. Strictly unnecessary, but certainly entertaining. Right, let's grab another chicken quickly. Oh, need to get there before this thing shuts down. Come on! Yes, that'll do. I don't know why those pots even spawn there. That must just be a this'll be fun thing because they're completely they're always despawned by the time you get over here, so. Unless you suppose you got over here first. Looks cool though. Anyway, if we go through here. Then we're exactly where we need to be. Where is that, you ask, Doctor? It's the end of the episode. Um oh, we did a great spin. Excellent. Um yes, because through here is. Let's look on the map. It's a perfectly round place. Hmm, what do you think could be through there? Thank you very much for watching, and hope you join me next time for some more City in the Sky. Thank you very much, and good day.